Hey there, it's Nathalie. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad you're here. This video is going to be just a kind of a little bit different. Uh, I do some stuff in my Etsy store uh, with some vintage things, and so uh, this was from a, a live recording, and uh, so I'm doing some voiceover and some actual from there, so from the actual live recording. I did it live on Facebook. But anyway, welcome. Glad you're here. I hope you'll learn something about vintage aprons and maybe a little bit of embroidery. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about some aprons. Now, I've been to a couple of estate sales and garage sales, and then some of these are just from uh, a collection that I have, and I forgot to get the crocheted one out of the kitchen. But anyway, I also wanted to show you how to do some little fancy stitching. Uh, I, I found this cute little uh, ruffled apron and it's made out of like cotton voile. Look how tiny it is. And I don't, it looks like a little maid's apron, something that uh, maybe would have been worn uh, over a little waitress that I don't know a diner, but maybe a little fancy restaurant. I know that uh, like in Mineral Wells at the Baker, they had a diner and then they also had a fancy dining room. But cute, 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 smooth to the sides and then gathered so that, you know, makes a nice puffy bow in the back. All right, and so this one was also kind of cute. Uh, I don't know how old this one is, but since we love Texas. Anyway, it's a, it's a Texas apron, and I, it might have been made with a Texas tea towel. Look at there, it's got McKinney in there. Oh, we're not in there, but it's like this big, huge star. This would be us right here in the middle of this star. See all those oil wells and stuff? But I think this was probably made out of a cup towel. and uh, But I think that's too cute. Just cute with the little blue bonnets on the side. I don't want to turn. Let me put these over here. Let me see. And I want to wait for these for a minute. All right. So this one is pretty old. I don't think it's a reproduction. I actually think it's vintage. And it would have also probably been made from a tea towel. And you can see that the edges are finished, like uh, serged edges, not serged, woven edges. This tiniest little uh, bias tape binding. And so I actually think that that was made from a cup towel and then the extra was used and they probably uh, cut that little pocket from this little section that was in, in here in the middle. So I think that one's pretty cute. Probably with these colors, I'm going to guess late 40s, early 50s is just a guess. Just a guess. All right, so and I, and I did a little bit of tiny bit of research. So there's a couple of kinds of aprons. Uh, there's cobbler's aprons, and the cobbler's aprons went across the shoulders, down the sides, and had big, huge pockets. And then the little ruffled one, like I showed you, and this ruffled one, these are called party aprons. And uh, the ones, and they can be ruffled or not ruffled. There's also just the, the ruffled aprons also. But this is gingham. And I was looking at Walmart earlier today about gingham, and they had some big plaid like this they had some let me do this again they had some gingham and then they also had something that looked like gingham but it wasn't it was like it had another one more color in it so like this has like the lightest this middle one this next one and then this dark and i don't think that these two are the same shape but this other piece that they had at walmart it had an extra they were this size but had extra section but uh the only other gingham they had was this little tiny check and so i didn't get any of that but okay so these are called party aprons and this one whenever i bought these these little party aprons they actually had this little section that you could like pin to your collar to make you look like a real proper little hostess. The hostess with the mostess. All right, let me put those over here. I did put the kitty cat, Miss Kitty No, back in the bedroom so she wouldn't be all up in the middle of this because she would absolutely love this. So this is just 
probably one that we are more familiar with, like maybe what grandma would have made, uh, just a, a, a plaid fabric. It has a, it has a little piping on it, so it's got a little extra something, something going on. And this piping would have been added on the top. This was folded over and stitched in here, and they added the piping on the pocket. I think that is just pretty cute right there, too. It's just got one pocket. And uh, so back to my list of aprons, they have the, these are some that we don't see much anymore. Mom and Me, Crochet, which I said is in the kitchen. I forgot to bring it in. And a pinafore. This was really neat. I didn't really realize what a pinafore was. I always thought it just kind of come up over the bust. But it actually, the pinafore aprons actually pinned to the dresses. I thought that was pretty cute. And then the crossback aprons. I don't know that I have a crossback one in here. I have a crossback one someplace else. But the little straps crisscross across the back. You slide into it. Handkerchief. They are like they were not really made out of handkerchiefs. But they would have come to a point at the front, just like if you took a handkerchief and folded it and had corners like, like this and like this. And uh, then scalloped, those were kind of fancier. Embroidered. Now I'm going to show you some embroidery here in a second. And sweetheart, they had the sweethearts at the top. So this one, and I need to tell a story about this. Let me put grandma's apron over here. This one, more than likely, is... Uh, Sugar sack or flower sack, probably uh, maybe vintage 1940s. It could be a little older than that, but I don't think so. And uh, it's got the bias tape. Oh, look, it is a scalloped apron. So there's the little scallops on the corners, on the edge, the bottom edge, with a little bias tape finish. That's pretty cute. Okay, so I have to tell a story about the sugar sacks or the flower sacks. We had a friend, when I was living in East Texas, we had a friend. She had lived in Jamaica, and there were a lot of the the people, the I'll call them maybe indigenous, but the people that were born and raised in the, the Jamaicans. And uh, uh, they had some that lived on their farm and that worked for them. They, you know, would pick and, and uh, help out with the animals and stuff, and so when she would take and give these ladies uh, the flour and sugar sacks, just give them to them, the next time she would go around, they, they would just be piled up in the corner and, the, you know, the bugs would get into them and they'd get wet and moldy and all that kind of stuff. But if she sold those ladies, those aprons, even for like a quarter, and not aprons, the, the sacks, the little colorful sacks, if she would sell those to them for even just a quarter, those ladies would make the prettiest dresses and the prettiest little aprons and, and stuff for their children. But they had no value unless that those ladies paid for them. And I thought that was really strange that they didn't just take, you know, something that was just straight up given to them. All right, so another little sidetrack. While I was digging through my apron stash, some bonnets. How about some bonnets? And this is so cute. Look. I don't know what the packaging is. This is Zesta Cracker Box that they've put into here to hold this bonnet away from their face. Look at the little pencil mark here. Is it all Zesta? It might all be Zesta crackers. So when I was living in East Texas and we uh, we lived on a farm, we bought a little little three and a half acres and we, you know, planted some beans and corn like, you know, like you should and uh, I'd get out there in my tank top. I was in my, I was 21, 22. I'd get in my tank top, my short shorts and uh, flip flops and get out and work in the garden in the heat of the day. And those ladies, the little ladies that live down the road, they're like, you're going to cook. You, you do not want to do that. They'd have their long sleeves on, their bonnets. Everything was covered up to make sure that they didn't burn their ears off and get the sun spots. Look at those sweet buttons. I love the way that this little bonnet is put together with a little ruffle at the top. And it doesn't have the, this is just like uh, machine quilted through here. It doesn't have the uh, cardboard in it or the cracker box in it. This one's probably a tiny bit newer. Maybe it was done to wear like as uh, maybe in a costume or something like that. The lace looks a little newer to me than some of my 
It is very fragile though. It's a very fragile lace. Okay. So this was the this was the little stash of aprons that made me think about I wanted to do this today. I got these all at one garage sale. And I I love them because they look like the seasons. This looks like Easter with this little rick rack. Look at that little tiny, tiny rick rack that that's stitched on there. And these are just the party aprons. This one's got just one pocket. It has all of this rick rack embellishment along the bottom of it. And then this looks like winter time and snowflakes. Look at that little embroidery. And all they've done is gone around the outside of some of these. And this one is uh, not embroidery floss. It's like a, a pearl cotton thread that they've used on this. So it has a little bit of a sheen and the, the weave of it is just, or the, the wrap of it is just a little bit different than embroidery floss. And it has one little pocket also. Isn't that cute with the little snowflakes on it? This one could be for St. Patty's Day. This one's pretty much like the, the pink one. Got the little tiny, but, uh, or Christmas. But this one really reminded me of Christmas and fall with the, uh, the little kind of snowflakes that are in here. And it's got the same stitch in this, the little blue one. But when you change the color of the gingham and change the color of the embroidery thread, what a different look. I just think that's so sweet. All right, and so this apron is, it's a project. I don't know that this project will ever get finished, but it has smocking. But so this one has a little pocket that's all ready to stitch on that's been smocked. That's the wrong side. Here's the right side of it. And I can tell it's the wrong side because the way they've got that stitch there. And so I've got extra fabric. So one thing leads to another anyway. So I went to dig out embroidery floss to get, oh, this is another apron. This is not in a vintage apron. This is my apron that I made as an artist. This is my, with all my art, left off the map. That was the name of my studio, with all my art. With this tie-dye fabric and then stitched all the pockets I've got for pencils and brushes and extra stuff here and paper towels and whatever else I might need to have in an artist apron. So <laughs> I made that one. So I'm going to, I thought, well, I'll show you a couple of these stitches and, uh, and you may or may not, but like I said, one thing led to another. So I went to look for my stash of embroidery floss. And so I found this cute, cute bag that I think maybe I've had for a long time. I did not make it, but isn't that cute? And it's got a couple of little sections in there, you know, throw your threads in that. Then my very organized, when I was doing a project of the Lord's Supper, which is still unfinished, all nice and organized, all in numerical order. And I always like to just get something that was close, but my friend Myla would say, no, you need to use the number that, the, that they say. So, you know, I would number all of my little, my little things here. And here's some of that real pretty pearly kind of floss that they probably use in the apron. I'll just leave that sitting out for a second. Okay. And then, I know I have a problem, y'all. This. Aren't they sweet? I didn't do this. I bought these, but just the little wooden spools... ONT, our new thread, that's a 10 cent spool of thread. And but this is it was sewing thread that was on here, but somebody has put embroidery floss on here. And then it was what kind of hoop? I might have a little bit of an issue, you know. We won't talk about that too much. Uh, and so when I was at Renee's garage sale when they were cleaning out Ted's barn and look at that in that sweet and more hoops but these are I probably wouldn't use these because they're kind of rusty and a little bit that one's pretty neat with that enamel on there this one has a wood inset and a metal on the outside this one probably has a cork lining to it to hold the the fabric in place Anyway, and so, 
some other time we'll go through that sack. I think that'll be pretty interesting. So two different kinds of needles. Did I lay them out here? Did I lose my needles? Just, there they are. Okay, so there's two different, two different needles that I brought in <clears throat> to work with today. And one of them is really sharp, which is what you would need for gingham. And the other one is a cruel or cross stitch needle and it has a, a dull point on it. So you would use that for like cross stitch or a, a, a really open weave fabric. But this one is for a closer weave fabric. Let's see, what do I want to put this in? This one is a newer one. And I'll grab a little corner of this. Flip that over. <clears throat> and I'm going to do this in red just so that you can see it against that fabric. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use... Could y'all hear me smacking, licking the end of the thread? I'm going to go ahead and use all six strands. If you wanted a softer embroidery, you could, you know, separate that where you're just using three strands. I'm going to roll that and twist it to make my knot. All right, let me grab this. So we can see as a pattern. Of course, I didn't try this out because I just think I can do everything, right? And so that was one of the other things I wanted to talk about. Uh, yesterday, I was going over to Abilene and, and on the way back, I was like, okay, I need to stop and, and eat. And to make a long story short, I could not decide where to eat. I'm... I know that that's really stupid. Okay, so they have this one. It is done on the inside of this, uh, on the dark. And it's a cross, 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 and cross. So we'll do that. On the dark, we come up, go across. Now, I have some fancy stitches that I've done, and again, those are on an embellished blue jean video on my YouTube channel, where I did all kinds of, like, junk and leftover uh, cut pieces of calendar towel and stuff like that. Anyway, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do, what I, where I wanted to eat, and then I got to thinking about it this morning. It's because I can't decide what I want to do with my hall closet, you know, because I like to do everything. I like to, uh, uh, I like to go junk hunting. I like to, uh, paint. I like to craft. Now then, right beside that, it has a straight stitch and then it's going to go diagonal, diagonal. So let's do that. So right beside, we're going to go into this one. And go up. And we'll go down to that one. And probably the pattern of this would be easier to follow if you did a whole bunch of, if you did like your, your dark ones first and then came back and did these. Anyway, like I was saying, I can't really decide what I like to do. I mean, I love to do everything. I love everything creative. I love old stuff. I went to Red Door Antiques today. Oh my gosh, I have to go clean out the back end of my car now because I found too much, too much good stuff. And I'm like, oh, just need to stop. Just need to stop. Get in the frame here. Okay, so then, then it would be... Let's see, I just came out of that one. There we go. We'll come back over here. Go across. And I'm sure this is not 
the way really to do this, but this is just the way that I'm going to do this. And here, because it goes up the entire length, and then across. So, and some of this stuff, like the the little soft thing, this thing with the embroidery stuff in it, and some of these hoops actually really did come out of, and my floss finder actually came out of my real true hall closet that is in my real hall that's full of stuff, full of ideas, full of projects that I need to finish, full of things that I want to do, and I'm going to do one of these days if I live long enough, or then my kids are going to have to just deal with it whenever I'm gone. I have a giant garage sale, and there it goes. All right, I'm going to do one more to finish this up. Do I need to do one more and then that will finish that little motif out? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do one more. And then I'm going to stop. This is kind of like eating potato chips. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day or evening to uh, watch. Uh, be sure you check out the description box below because of the, the pattern for one of my aprons is uh, will be linked below. It's over at My Hall Closet. You can get it for free when you subscribe to my blog. Anyway, all of those links and all that information is below. Thank you again for watching. Give me a little like, a thumbs up, subscribe. Um, be sure and share me with your friends. Anyway, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.